Pete, are you there? We're not getting audio. Pete, can, blink once for yes. We're not getting audio, Pete. We can't hear you. Right, what do we do now? We can't hear you. Oh, nice. No, I'm so smart. Look. <laughs> How do you? Oh, I didn't even know you could do that. Okay. Why does he have a microphone? I have one too. Where? This is a really. Um, this Zoom shit is pretty, pretty. Uh... All right, can can you guys hear me? Oh yeah, Pete. That's amazing. <laughs> All right, yeah. Noam, you want to hit the intro? Start us up. <laughs> um. Good evening. Okay, should I start? Yeah. Go ahead. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Comedy Seller Show. Here on Sirius XM Channel Ninety Nine. My name is Noam Dwarman. I'm the owner of the Comedy Seller. I'm here in my basement. <laughs> in front of me on the zoom screen i see dan natterman periel ashenbrand without any makeup and <laughs> from the west coast pete lee peter lee hi pete hey hey guys i wore my seller shirt uh i've awesome. I, I didn't just wear it for the podcast but i've been wearing it all day and yesterday too because that's where we're at <laughs> Oh my God. Can you believe this is fucking happening? I, it, this is beyond my wildest nightmares. It's crazy. I, I can't even believe it. I always no. saved money for a rainy day and this is the rainy day. And I'm like, do I have enough? I don't know. It's well, you have enough of it, it, depending on how long it goes. Are you getting the, 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 the unemployment benefits that you're entitled to? Yeah, I just talked to my business manager today and we're doing, um, we're Probably applying for him, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why they're working so hard right now. They're, <laughs> they're like, we have to show our value before this guy realizes that he should give us 5% of his unemployment. Your business manager if it, it ought to be Google at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Which, How do I get unemployment? But go ahead. <laughs> what do I do? I actually, I just got really good news. Um, there's a show on Comedy Central that's coming out. Uh, that's one of those fail army clip shows. And long before, uh, long before all this went down, I auditioned for it, completely forgot about it. And then about 20 minutes ago, I got a phone call saying that I got the part that I'm doing the fail army show. Voice over a lot of on like true TV or, um, yeah, like talk soup, those kinds of things. Yeah. Uh, but like more specifically the type of clip shows where it's like clips of internet people who are like you're they're tripping on a rake and then getting hit in the nuts oh, yeah. uh it's like that, that kind of a show and then i'm gonna be like the bob saget voiceover guy that goes like oh you know <laughs> like a guy that, like he he's he's sledding and then he falls on his face really hard and i'm gonna be the guy that goes uh well it's good that he's already icing it Ugh. <laughs> so uh that's gonna be my job for the next indefinite future now well, that is that, a gig is that, 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 uh, is that on hold given the corona situation or is that uh is that going to start the production that's going to start production and they even asked me they're, they're like do you have a do you have a zoom recorder you know the same thing that i'm the skyping in or zooming in with this uh they're like do you have podcast equipment that you can lay down these tracks at home if, if need be and i'm like yeah I, so, we can so, so all that talk about the rainy day that was just to make us feel better yeah <laughs> well i mean as you guys know this this show is just a pilot and the, so i'm doing the pilot and then you know how comedy central you know they they can pick something up or not do it um you know we've all been through that so hopefully they pick this up and then you know it, it's uh the rainy day is over temporarily well also don't it isn't your girlfriend she has a normal job uh, that uh, she can take the reins if needs be uh 
if, if this is indefinite? Yeah, is she luckily works. She luckily works telehealth from this exact spot. So uh, one of the delays on me jumping on the call was that she was seeing a patient uh, via telehealth because she's a psychiatric nurse practitioner. So she, um, she was in this chair talking to a patient, you know, at, at 4 p.m. And as soon as she got off of the call, uh, I had to hook up all the tech and get it together and get logged in on her computer to How call How did she join you? It sounds interesting. Um, <laughs> no, on the show now. Yeah, hold on. I'll, I'll, well, uh, to, you know, no, Pete, the Corona survivor. I wanted to get into that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we, uh, well, we both, we both are. Let me ask her if she wants to join. Hold on. Um, I don't want to, I'm going to, I'm going to jump off real quick because I just don't want to yell while I'm on the podcast. Hold on. Okay. okay. Well, we'll see you in a couple. He's so nice. He doesn't want to yell on a podcast. Good boy. Um, Having a, a psychiatric nurse in the family probably comes in handy, huh? It would for you. Uh, so Pete, <laughs> Pete, Pete is a, a corona survivor? Well, yes, but it's a little more complex than that, but uh, we'll get into that. He, um, Pete, is she coming? All right. Yeah, she's coming. Um, so it's Dan Adderman, who you know very well. Dan, hi. How do you hi, do? Hi. No. Hi. Hi. Sit down. Know, hey, Hi. How, are, how are you? Hey, guys. Are there How's enough mics here or you'll have to share? Can you hear me? Um, I actually do have a second mic that I could hook up. You talk to It's Jane. okay. I'm just going to say a quick hi. Okay. So, Sorry. So I've been talking you're, all day. You're, 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 you guys had, you had the virus? So, yeah, we went, we, so we had all of the symptoms of the virus. That's the, that's the crazy all of this. We had a fever, chills, swollen lymph node, a, a dry cough that I, I posted online that it's felt like stepping on a Lego with your lungs. Uh, it was just, it was so nasty. And then, you know, we were sick for days and with all of the symptoms. And then um, I, I kept telling people that because one of the symptoms is also, you know, running to the toilet and uh, that loss of, loss of taste. I could not taste food for two days. That was like the beginning sign for me. Wow. Yeah. And then I had a fever for four days straight that only would go away with Tylenol, but luckily it did. So that was good. Yeah. This is, I feel like I'm, I'm doing a man on the street interview right now. <laughs> now how do you know it wasn't a regular flu? Well, we both got swabbed for that. Um, and also I'd had the flu vaccine. So, um, I mean, I don't, it didn't really feel like a flu in that I wasn't vomiting. I wasn't, it, it was weird. It was like, it was just body aches and pains, dry cough. I had no congestion. I lost like taste for like the first two days. And then I started having really, I was just cold. Like all the time I could not get warm. Di and body aches. I never had that. He did, but I didn't have that part. But the extreme exhaustion is what got me. Like I, I could not get out of bed. I mean, I was anytime I'd stand up. Like one time, I fell down in the chair, which I'm but like I'm not a. So, well, so let me ask you this because oh, I'm sorry because the the um the threat to life seems to always be uh, breathing issues. How, how, mm. how hard was it to breathe? You have one of those oxygen things where you're able to measure? I it. don't feel like I, so at rest, like when I'd just be like sitting there, I would be fine and I wouldn't have any trouble breathing. It was only with activity that I would get tightness in my chest. But luckily I never felt any like just sitting still problems breathing, if that makes sense. Like I, I just didn't have that. Yeah, the um, I had sh I definitely had shortness of breath, and um, you know, like I if I was on a phone call with a friend and they made me laugh, I'd just start coughing immediately. I couldn't even I couldn't even laugh a little bit without uh, without coughing. But uh, you know, everything that I've read, and then the the ER doctor because we we actually went to Cedar Sinai um, to get tested. We were in one of those pandemic tents, and. Uh, um, I can share, I, they said not to take pictures. Of course I took pictures. I was like, I was like come on, it's 2020. I'm taking a picture. But, um, uh, so we went there and the ER doctor basically said, you know, there's, there's a, when you get the thing, you can either, you know, your symptoms can either go up like this and get really severe to the point where you're on a ventilator 
or most people get it and or not or some people get it and then they just get better very quickly so she said that usually there's there's a point right here in the graph where people either rest or they don't or they try to be a hero or you know you know the kind of person that, that comes into work that's like oh I should, probably shouldn't be here but I'm pretty sick right now uh, they basically were saying like that guy's dead like <laughs> that guy's going to be on a ventilator and die but if you really if you really rest and let your body get ahead of this that's where you're you have a better chance, you, you have a better. You have a better chance of having a more positive outcome yeah and you know so let's not panic the audience the fact is is that most people have a positive outcome yeah, most people have a positive outcome. What I've read, and it's basically all I'm doing is reading about this. I'm kind of yeah. obsessed about it. Yeah, we've been following it for a long time. I had a flight booked to Bali with a layover in Hong Kong in May. So I've been really like following this for a while. And it's, um, it's, it's I mean, it, like, did you see the death toll numbers today already in the U.S.? I'm not don't, I, that I don't look at, but I, I read a lot of articles. Okay, we've had over 500 just today. Just What's the today? average age? Do we know the average age? No. I do know there was a girl in Spain that died two days ago that was 16 years old. She had no prior health conditions that would have made her outcome, you know, any less than anyone else's. And she had two negative tests before she finally had a third positive test. Um, and she died. But how and that's we, like from um, like, re, like reliable sources. I mean, it's I, not I like a, a lot of articles that say her mother said she had no or articles that, uh, where, where they'll say like, her, her mother said she had no, uh, no pre-existing conditions, which may be, but you know, it could be that she did have pre-existing conditions. I just, I don't I think, that. I don't really think there's a point in like debating that though. I think it's more, it should just be like, <laughs> we just, we just take precautions for everybody from a healthcare perspective. All, I don't go into a panic. That's, yeah. the, that's one point. Well, panic is different from fear. Fear brings about healthy change, which brings about healthier behaviors that could save us as a race. So, I mean, it is like, it, that's evolution, that's survival. It's fear. Fears can be a good thing. Panic is very different. Well, um, yes, well, but I, even fear at a certain level is, 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 is unproductive. But in any case, um, it's also good to know what the pre-existing conditions are so that we can really pay attention to the people that have those pre-existing diabetes issues. being overweight obviously lung issues copd smoking you know america has a lot of diabetic overweight people that's a very vulnerable population but here's the punchline you guys both tested negative for corona is that correct we did we did yeah we did awesome. and the the weird thing about it is that they say that our tests uh only had a 70 percent efficacy rate so there's you know 30 percent uh, margin of error and we were even told that by the doctor when they called us so they said to we should assume that we're positive and quarantine based upon our symptoms and then quarantine based upon that so I you know it's it feels weird to have tested negative for it you know like when we were feeling bad I really didn't want to have it you know I was like oh god I hope this is not corona I hope it's just something else um, but we, you know, because to qualify to get tested, we had to be tested for flu and strep. And so we knew it wasn't flu or strep. So we're like, God, I hope it's not Corona. And then as soon as we got the test results back saying that it was negative, I was like, damn it. I hope I wished it was Corona because we wanted to have antibodies and possibly immunity to it and be able to shirk some of those fears when it comes to it. So, you know, I, having this, uh, this negative diagnosis, uh, knowing that there's a 30% chance that we may, we maybe did have it. We're now hopeful that we can get the antibody test. That's the, you know, that, that'd be the best case scenario is we get to do that antibody test and we have the antibodies and we had it. I know um, given all your experience in the restaurant business and playing guitar, uh, would you say that Pete had Corona? <laughs> you know, I don't, I honestly, I mean, it's weird timing. I know I'm never sick. I just, I'm not, I just never get sick. And no, I mean, what do you, what it do you is, a, it was just weird. It was weird timing. Honestly, there was a part of me that I kept telling myself, oh, this is like a psychosomatic thing. I'm imagining myself getting sick. I mean, I work in psychiatry. Imagine, I know it's possible, but. One uh, can imagine um, certain things. You can imagine shortness of breath. But not a fever. That's where I was like, okay, this is going on for four days now. Yeah. I but I, I did try to convince myself that I was I'm imagining it. harder to imagine. 
Okay, I'm gonna share. I'm gonna share my screen here. I want to show you guys something. So, this is. Um, I just ask a question. First of all, it seems so obvious that it was Corona. But my question is: is like so after you quarantine for 14 days, assuming that you did have it, then mm -hmm. what happens? Then are you presumed to be? Like immune to it or what? Like, are you supposed to like just go out gallivanting? They need the antibody. That's test. a great question. I honestly, I don't know if even scientists really know the answer to that because there seems to be these cases where people are getting it again, but they don't know if it's like if testing is wrong, which is totally a possibility. I think there's just so many unknowns because this is a brand new virus. You know, but when will you be able? When and if will you will you be able to get? An antibody test to verify because it's, it's still being you made. It. It's almost I can't even imagine. I mean, do you have any? Dan, can, can I just stay here? So okay. this is interesting. Can you guys see that chart? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm this is uh, uh, as of March 30th, and the, the 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 last column there is the total number of deaths by age group. So for instance, uh, 18 to 44, 54 people have died, and the first column is underlying condition. So of the 54 that have died in that younger age group, 39 have had um, underlying conditions, two have not, and 13 they're mm -hmm. not sure. So, you know, it, so that's a very, very small number. We don't know, yeah. they don't give us how many people actually have had, you know, what the, what the, num what the denominator is there. But um, of 75 and over, you can see it's most of the deaths, most of the people, most mm -hmm. people have underlying conditions, but there are a full hundred um, they're not sure of, and but only three have no underlying conditions. Of the people 65 to 74, zero had no underlying conditions and 48 mm -hmm. unknown. So clearly it's, it's two things going up at the same time. It's um, your age yeah. and then underlying conditions are a, like a whole thing. I'm also so skeptical of numbers right now because... I mean, we did not get our results for technically 11 days. Yeah. So there's just this part of me that I just don't trust numbers right now. I mean, well, just I'm a perfect a example of, of that. There's a margin of error not to trust, but, you, but it's, exactly. not gonna be, it's not going to be off by, you know, 75% or something. I mean, I don't know. I mean, as far as LA goes, if you look at what our numbers are right now, I don't even know what they are today. I've been working, so I haven't even seen them. I just, I think you need to add like 100,000 to it. Not deaths, of course, but like as far as the positive cases. That would be good news. I was refused testing twice after being in LAX in JFK airport, after having all the symptoms, after my primary care doctor calling LA County lab and requesting for me to be tested. I was refused twice on two separate days before I was able to even, before he sent me to the ER. Okay, I'm sorry, Dave. So let me just add this to the mix for people who are, following along. So here is the, the um, this is the total number of cases. Mm -hmm. And here we see that the 18 to 44 overwhelmingly has the most cases, 42%. Mm -hmm. So if you remember that, uh, that other one showed that the, the fewest deaths were in that range. Yeah. The most cases by far in that range. So that would indicate just how low, how much the risk is different for young people yeah. I mean, they're also more active than that other age group, you know, than the higher age group. Of course, they're going to be out more. They're also probably more likely to not quarantine as heavily. But see, that leads back to my idea of fear bringing about change. At first, people say, oh, this is an old person disease. This is an old person problem. That's when it gets deadly. People over 65 really started listening to that and started staying at home. That could also be contributing to, you know, less deaths. I mean, yeah. change in behavior is very powerful. So can you believe know. his whole family got tested? I don't know. Oh, wow. He had to pull. What'd you that's say? Impressive. I, I mean, New York's been tested. testing way more than LA has. So um, I think that's awesome. Yeah. We got tested. My wife just called like apparently like three or four times. He called she five was times. having five times. She yeah. was having, um, yeah, but she exaggerates. She was having, <laughs> uh, I, there's, a, there's, a, there's a Juanita uh, discount that goes into any story. But, uh, she was having <laughs> tightness in her chest and, and coughing. Mm -hmm. And that scared the shit out of all of us. So she, she called, but when they test, they, they test the ca whole car. So we had mm -hmm. our au pair, we had the kids and everything. And we all, we all came out negative, which again, awesome. I, yeah, I was kind of sad. Like I said, I was, I was like, well, if this is all it is, I hope it is. 
I hope it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're going through too. I mean, we're both, I mean, I'm kind of like depressed that now I have to go into a hospital this Saturday and work and I don't have immunity possibly. But it sounds like the test is totally inaccurate. I, I, deep down, that's what I feel, obviously, from a scientific point of view, I would never say that. But like my body tells me that I experienced something very different. That was very um, Trump, what you just did. Trump doesn't know what I would never say that. But uh, I, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's personal experience and then there's logic. You know, my brain tells me like, I know science and I know that there's the likelihood that we are negative. Yeah. But, man. <laughs> I love that you're like Trump. I had millions and millions, millions of cells, and millions, millions, <laughs> millions of cells telling me that, that I had Corona. But I would never when, say it. When can you get an antibody test or can you, is that available? I don't think they've completed those tests and making that yet. There's a rumor that they're going to be rolling them out in Colorado. I heard, yeah. but I don't know what the validity, I mean, what's the validity in any of this? I, I, you yeah. know, even, they go on news conferences every day and say things and then CNN goes, Oh yeah, that's not a thing yet. And I, uh, you know, so I don't, I don't know. I feel like we're being told things by, by government officials that end up being negated or, you know, there's policies that they're going, you know, the new tax changes are going to be this. And then it, it turns out, well, hold on um, that it's not completely flushed out yet. Um, I applied for a small business loan today and uh, you know, so I'm like, I, you know, I don't know, my, my business managers were like, yeah, they, they told us that it was all set. And then when you go in there, it's just completely not set up right yet. So, um, I don't, I don't know what to, I, the point behind saying all that is that I just don't know what to think about anything right now because yeah. we're, we're being Everything's told a lot of information and nobody really completely knows. Why do you have to go back into the hospital? Why can't so you- I- I took off for three weeks. I work per diem in a psychiatric ER and inpatient psych unit. And it's in San Bernardino, which is like a very high need area anyways for healthcare. I drive like an hour to get there. And um, I'd already called off for like two weekends in a row just to quarantine. And obviously with this, and then there's shortage. And then most of our attendings are 65 and over. There's one psychiatrist who's the head and he is younger than me and then there's one other nurse practitioner and she only works three days a week so they're going to be very short staff soon so I said I'll come in and work like every weekend for April so yeah no um, the comedy teller is just uh, is all that food getting getting spoiled (laughs) with all the food (laughs) I bet Mark Norman's so sad (laughs) yeah Mark Norman's like can I can I come in and eat some of the pickles (laughs) is he here no what what's (laughs) What you do with all the What's the question? What would you do, do with all the food at the at the uh, comedy cellar olive tree? Uh, I guess we threw it out. I, 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 you I, threw away the 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 special sauce. It's oh, so sad. We love the wing sauce. It's so good. I mean, you can't you can't save that for three months. True. Yeah, true. That's true. <laughs> no, I, mean, I I will also say that you know there'll probably be a lot of chefs out of work when this is all over. Yeah, and you I might be able that. to hire one, a good one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, if we ever open again, it might be a good time to get a... Don't say well, that. don't say that. Yeah. I like that he said it because that just creates the demand. <laughs> People are going, oh, well, wait, really there's a that. chance you they really won't. Have well, I have to make sure I buy a ticket. Are you saying that just uh, tongue-in-cheek or you really have a feeling that, that that's going to happen? You That will never open again? Yeah. No, we I, get, we. I can't imagine never opening again because we'll open. My, I... I worry that people will, people will be so traumatized by all this, they won't want to pile into a basement to see Natterman tell jokes, but I don't know. I don't know. Sure, Natterman, but what about Pete Lee? <laughs> I don't, Pete, Pete's going to still be in on the way. He's not coming to New York anytime soon. Right? <laughs> not until there's an antibody <laughs> test anyway. <laughs> oh, once we get that antibody test, if we have those antibodies, I'm going to be flying everywhere. I'm going, to be, um, I'm going to be living it up with $189 well, you know, flights. Germany is giving out certificates to people that have antibodies saying you can go about your business. I just wow. read that. There uh, has to be some sort of an antibody test because they're asking for plasma at Sinai. Ariel, where did you get that interesting lilt in your voice? Where, where, did, where did that come? Is that like, if I go to your house for Thanksgiving, does your whole family talk like that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, it's, really, it's, it's like, 
who's on the phone? Oh, I have no idea. No, you know, it's Periel. Like it, it's pretty, it's pretty distinct. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't. I, I really have no idea what you're talking about. I was saying in Germany they're giving out certificates to people. Not well. Remember in the '40s they used to give you a, a certificate to say you were pure Aryan. Yeah. They're not doing yeah. that anymore. But they're giving you a ticket to say you have an antibody, and you can go about your business. Is the certificate a certificate or like an armband yeah. or like? Signed by the Führer himself. Yeah. So interesting about Germany because today I read a I read a an interview in in Der Spiegel. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> is that okay? <laughs> Just an, and anyway, it was, it was a guy who makes ventilators, one of the big companies, I forget which company, famous company. And from what I read, I can send it to you later, um, then they're, they're never going to catch up with the ventilators. It's like a year before they can really turn out big numbers. This is a company that makes ventilators. And then we think like GM is going to try to turn out ventilators, like going to try to turn a, you know, a, 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 a Chevy Malibu into a ventilator. <laughs> 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 But the, and then I was also reading, I think I said it to Dan, all about ventilator studies. Very few people, once they put you on a ventilator, they don't have much hope for you. You know, we, so I think that the big ventilator issue is really that these horrible choices the doctors have to make in triage. And then, of course, they do save some lives, although they don't really know that you would have not survived without the ventilator. But I think we've all been kind of led to believe that these ventilators are the key to everybody living. And the more and more I read about it, it's, it's really not. It's, the, it's whether the virus wants you dead or not. That really is the key to people living. Well, what's interesting is, like, I read a lot. I, I've been, like, there's a lot of, uh, on YouTube and online, interviews with people that have had coronavirus. Yeah. And for some reason, some people skate right through, you know, mm -hmm. and other people get their ass handed to them and just beaten for, like, 12 days. It's just, it's a horrible. They get fever and excruciating muscle pains and uh, pneumonia and other people glide right through it. And I'm not, I haven't been able to ascertain uh, why that is. Why that's, some people... that's probably like most flu type diseases, you know, very, I mean, that's probably not unusual that people mm -hmm. have different uh, degrees of response to it. Like sometimes my wife and I get the same, you know, it, it appears to be the same bug and she'll usually get sicker than I, she'll usually get like bronchitis or close to pneumonia. And I usually, don't so have you guys ever known anyone to ever die from the flu like personally no never heard of yeah that. me I neither I, never me neither. Somebody. I know that the rates were are high but i've never known a single person to die from the flu never ever yeah. known anybody that died from that, the flu that, that gets back to something that you said earlier about uh these you know we hear the stories now of every person that just dies inexplicably with no underlying conditions. These stories, I think, exist for the flu as well. And, and we're, mm -hmm. we're in a weird situation now, kind of like every time somebody gets kidnapped in the country now, we hear about it. So we think, oh, people are being kidnapped right and left. Like mm -hmm. if a single person in the United States of America, a single 25-year-old dies with no underlying conditions, we're gonna all going to read about it. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we're just not capable of processing that as an extreme outlier that it is. So we think, oh, no, 25-year-olds are a risk. Just like, oh no, my, my kids can't walk outside anymore because kids get kidnapped. But we really, we really need all the data to really understand what that means. There's always going to be something. I know. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm, not about, I'm not worried about dying from this, but I am worried about um, diarrhea and nausea and <laughs> severe muscle loss. Yeah. I'm yeah. not worried about dying. Well, I'm, it's I'm possible. Not. I mean, most people, most people who get it are totally asymptomatic. So no. it's possible that no you know, no no. no. See, don't, don't don't you don't. But where did you get that from? Most it's people true. who get race symptomatic. No, it's not true. It is. It's true. not established. If even if it's true, it's you're the only one that knows it. Doctor Periel. Is that not true? I thought that's why it was so contagious and dangerous. No, it's because before you become symptomatic, you are still contagious for several days, and then you become symptomatic. Uh, I read that 1% of people that have it are asymptomatic, 1%. Now, it, it could be more, but that has not been established. But a process yeah, I don't trust most. any numbers right now yeah. at all. This is, this is new. I, yeah, I'm also like that. I, I don't know. But it, I also wonder with, uh, with everybody staying at home, because um, the number one killer of people in America is diabetes and heart disease. Um, or heart disease related stuff. The number two is car crashes. I wonder 
I wonder if the car crashes are down, but then with everybody stocking up on junk food, if the diabetes and heart disease deaths are up. Oh, I just told Dan, I, I, I saw this today, but I couldn't find it just now. Uh, there's like seven or 10,000 fewer deaths this week than the same week last year. Wow, I don't know. interesting. Because everybody's wow. staying home doing nothing. Oh, that's no accident. <laughs> Those numbers in the end will be very interesting to see. Besides yeah. car accidents, what other things are people not dying of? Uh, Opioid. Uh, lightning strikes, bathroom, yeah. uh, I don't know. Yeah, Opioid shot. deaths are Street extremely crime. high. Um, Opioid deaths are what? Come here. Come say They're hi very everybody. high in our country right now. I Why think they- Yes, be less now yeah. than they were before. That doesn't make any sense. No, she said they're higher now, I thought. Well, no, oh no, not not higher now. I honestly don't know the rates, but I know that, that he was asking for one of the the, the uh, things that causes a lot of people to die right now. Less death this week than last year at this time. And I'm saying besides car accidents, what could account for that? Unless it's- Suicides. I think we're going to see a lot more suicides. People's and oh, oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> I just said the most depressing thing yeah, ever. Right now, the I'm most like, beautiful child walks in the room. <laughs> Jamie, don't, don't finish that thought. <laughs> why, I don't want this to be like some video that he watches. Uh, if I die, if we if I die now, first of all, there won't even be a funeral, right? You can't even gather <laughs> for a funeral. Yeah, no, no one will we'll be able to zoom it won't, won't have the Natterman eulogy. And then the, this this one especially will never remember his father. So I just oh my I God, can't. why are you saying such horrible things in front of him? You're going to traumatize him. Yeah, no, you're oh, ruining his sorry. apple slices. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> you? I, I shouldn't say retarded. Oh God, I, he, uh, <laughs> he doesn't How understand. old is? Uh, he doesn't understand. He doesn't understand. Huh? How old is he? How old are you? Six. How old? Six. Six. <laughs> <laughs> he's two. You're two. You know how old you are. He's two. He's already, oh my God, he's already breaking. <laughs> well, he's lucky that this, this whole thing is, uh, he's not even perceiving it. Yeah, he won't remember it. No, he, he won't remember it. But the other kids will. Did yeah, you guys yeah. see the movie Life is Beautiful? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, with the, uh, oh, no. uh, the Italian uh, Bernini. 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 He's in a concentration camp with his kid and he convinces his kid that it's actually a game that they're playing and the kid's having the time of his life in the concentration camp. That's my kids. Like they don't understand. They just think this is mm -hmm. just awesome fun. But that movie never made any sense to me because you're, you're starving. I mean, when kid is hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I remember yeah. when I was hungry as a kid, nobody was gonna convince me that I wasn't hungry. And then but it is the movie. <laughs> Dan, I have a question for you. How many tiny water bottles do you have at your house right now? <laughs> you know, from the uh, green room at the uh, cellar. Yes, room. I don't have any, but I do have a lot of bottled water because I prefer to drink bottled water. But smart, no, and Periel, we we Look almost how beautiful. My wife is. This is no makeup, no Hi. nothing. Gorgeous. Hi. 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 This is Hi. this is what she looks like when she lets herself go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she is very beautiful, babe. She means nothing to me. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm glad to hear that even after all these years, you still find your wife beautiful. Uh, What'd you say, Dan? I said, after all these years, you still find Juanita beautiful. That's good to see. <laughs> right, take, take the baby. <laughs> yeah. I love that Dan said that, and then we all just left him hanging. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, she's almost gone. With, with the, um, I mean, the, the comedy cellar, the building, the physical plant itself. Yeah. Is anybody paying attention to it? Or is uh, it being yeah. completely ignored? Uh, Liz is around. Tony lives in the building. Tony's uh, like our the, the Mexican dude. He was like our day uh, guy. And um, uh, Tony's worked for us like how long? What's almost thirty years now. Wow. And, and um, uh. Uh, Ava lives in the building. So yeah, we have, we, we, the building is occupied. Is there anything that has to be done to the space to maintain it or it just kind of just leave it? No, but, but I am worried in my own home too. Like I'm worried about if the, if the sewer trap backs up or the, like, like anything where you need a repair guy or I'm also really worried about the kids uh, cutting their fingers and needing stitches, like things that small, like especially now the weather's gonna break. They're gonna go outside and running around. What if one of them sprains an ankle or breaks a leg? It has to and has to go to the hospital, and then we get the virus there. So it's, it's enough to make you crazy. Yeah. 
Yeah, that is a very real thing. We were, we just went for a drive because that was the only thing that we could do. You know, we were in this contained automobile and I was like, Jamie, drive safe. Cause remember if we crash this car, uh, nobody can help us right now. <laughs> all, all the beds are occupied. It's you true. Know. You got to be really careful. And there's going to be stories of people who died that way. Yeah. Isn't cool. that what that um, you, ship I mean, was? Isn't that, that what the, the um, U.S. whatever comfort is for? Isn't that for that for non-corona people? Mm-hmm. In L.A., I know for sure it is. Yes, yeah, it, not everyone's going to be turned away, but they're going to be um, less uh, available for you. And I know that people that have heard stories, people going to the, calling up the doctor saying, I, 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 I can't breathe. I, um, I'm, I can't move. I, I can barely stand up. And the doctor's like, hey, <clears throat> call us back, you know, when you're turning blue. Because we can't help you. <laughs> no, you, know, you know, Jeffrey Gurian has it. He does? Yeah, and he was in the hospital. Oh, no. And they, they sent him home today with uh, hydroxychloroquine, that, that, Quinn, that, um, the Trump drug. The Trump drug. So, the Trump they, drug. so they're giving it out in New York now. I guess they feel, as Trump says, what the hell you got to lose, right? So they, they, they're giving it out. Uh, it would be wonderful if it, if it actually did work, although I'll, the latest data is less encouraging than the first stuff we heard. Yeah. I mean, I, I knew people when that information first came out that were going out to buy tonic water because apparently tonic water has traces of that in it. And they were... Well, there was a doctor on, on the news yesterday, an emergency room doctor, and I asked him, how come you haven't gotten He says, I don't know, but I've been taking the hydrochloroquine, you know, so he thinks maybe that's kept him healthy. Well, the guy, wow. in France, the guy in France is using it at the first sign. In other words, he's not waiting for it to go all the way to the lungs. And he said, and he, look, the, the guy's, I don't know if you know this, the, the French dude, Dr. Ruault or something, and he like has really long hair and he looks kind of crazy. Oh yeah, the guy that looks like uh, like the guy from Stranger, Th- like the doctor from Stranger Things, or the scientist from Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so he said that you got to give it right away because once it gets to the lungs, you, it, it <clears throat> may be too it, that it works better when you when you get it right away. You no, know, t- Tammy flu. Tammy flu is the same way, right? You you have to take it right mm-hmm. in the beginning. So yeah. a lot of drugs are like that. At some point, uh, it can't it can't overcome the 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 depth of the disease. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I read something where um, the what the virus does in the lungs is it actually creates scar tissue as it replicates and takes starts to take over the lungs. So you have fibroids. I, fibroids, yeah. So you actually have less surface area to you know to receive oxygen and and ingest it into your body, and that that's probably one of the reasons why you got to catch it early, yeah. or you know get ahead of it early. That but makes sense. You, yeah, I don't know. Do they know about Michael Yo? Oh yeah, Mike, comedian Michael Yo. Um, he just released an Instagram video saying that he was in the hospital for eight days, and um, it, know, it's he's a healthy guy. He's a very healthy guy, very in shape. Um, yeah, he he released a video today. It was you know he, he he's crying in it. He talks about how as soon as you go into the hospital, they tell you you might never see your family again, and everybody that he's in there with is in the same case where they they're just told that the reality is that as soon as you get admitted you could die alone you know Why because tell you what are you supposed to do with that information i think it's just to prepare you it's to, so that way people don't panic when they can't call their family because you need as much oxygen as possible so if you already know that then you don't panic when things well, how go about just not bring it up at all I believe in telling people yeah, beforehand. Th- there's a theory that, um, you know, the more information, the better, yeah. you know, immediately, because then people know what to expect. But I don't know. I mean, it, but it's he's it. out and he's at home yeah, he's, and he's, he's with okay his family now. and that's the silver lining to the whole thing. But you, you I may mean, never he, see your family again. And, and by the way, we've, you're, you were adopted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure we get it all out there before you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. How do what? I'm trying to look this guy up. I don't know. Michael, how do you spell yo? Uh, yo, why, why, oh. Why, oh. Yeah, I watched that video. It's, it's really, it's pretty intense. It's pretty touching. Yeah. We were joking around afterwards that the video was so good that I was like, he just won the coronavirus. Like, he won. <laughs> he's, this, is, this video is going to be everywhere. Um, he already is, I think he's on that show Access Hollywood right now. And um, 
it, there's not a media outlet that's not going to pick up that that video. It was so uh, it it was it just touched your heart. He's wait, a I'll handsome dude, Michael Yo. Uh, yeah, it's Michael on, Yo. Mm -hmm. and it's wait, on wait, Instagram. Instagram. Uh, Michael Yo Instagram. Uh, and uh, well, I don't I don't know how to this, wait. Let me just say, is, is this him? Um, is that him? That's him. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the him. video on the left. Yeah. This one right here? Yeah, that he one. He used to be on Chelsea Lately too, right? He's on Chelsea Lately. He's a he's a good friend of mine. We you know, in LA he's again and your show didn't get picked up on Comedy Central. <laughs> uh, so, uh select uh okay, let's see. Can you hear that? It's me. Yep. Stuff, want to say thank you not good for the audience thank everyone for all the thoughts and prayers <clears throat> um i'm at home now self-quarantine was at the hospital for eight days uh a lot of people asked me what happened so basically i went to the hospital i had pneumonia and uh, corona at the same time which you know if you're watching the news that's that's the deadly <clears throat> that's the deadly combo right there so um man it was scary you know like when i checked in the doctor said this is gonna go good fast or this is gonna go really bad fast and you know they let you know right away when you check in you're not gonna see your family so no matter what happens you're not seeing your family because they don't have enough equipment and you're just too contagious. <clears throat> so, um, you know, it was a rough couple nights, but uh, made it through. I Handsome dude, right? Handsome dude, Shall yeah. Shall I keep playing? Shall I keep playing? Well, I think we get the idea. I Dan. Think <laughs> 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 oh, I didn't mean it, Dan. Yeah. I meant it. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate all the... Uh, Dan a gave him the light. Prayers, man. <laughs> well, we Dan gave him right. the light on his Corona oh, video. That, uh, you know, while I'm in the hospital getting better, I was looking at. The... Yeah, yeah, we get the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let's, I want to hear the rest. I want to hear the rest. The uh, ring cam. I mean, you know. And I saw a bunch of friends drop off stuff at the house for my family, and that meant so much. It meant so much. Um. To all my comedian friends for reaching out. Not, not you, Dan. Um, <laughs> not Dan. I Corona jokes. Well, there's a lot I of things we could play, no. I'm I'm gonna gonna have have blood. I literally spit up blood, and then I was like, yo, that's what's up. You know, we got to keep laughing. No matter how bad it gets, we got to keep laughing. So, um, look, I made it through so far. It's all good, but... Uh, just want you to know the people that are dying in the hospital, man. I don't care what you're reading. I was in there around people like that and uh, dying alone. They don't have family in there, man. They can't. And you're gonna hear stories where nurses are surrounded and the nurses and the first responders, man, you guys are amazing. You're risking your life for us. You know, but I'm reading all the stories. I'm seeing all these stories of people dying. And I know when I was in there, they were like, yo, if it goes bad, you're not going to see anybody. You know, so just remember those people. You know, I made it. You know, but we need to shift the attention to the people that need to help and got to die alone. Um, please stay safe. And uh, thank you for all the support. Appreciate you. But not Dan. <laughs> not Dan. The whole time I kept trying to fight off laughing because I was thinking that Dan was going to interrupt and going, no. Nah. <laughs> we, we, uh, Anyone's welcome to watch the videos after. I just <laughs> come here to hear 
the show. Oh, well, let's play another video then. Let's play. There's nothing <laughs> we can play. This is like the time he said you were somewhat of a friend at the cellar. <laughs> yeah. We were we were doing our snuggle storm podcast at the cellar Vegas. We um uh, we like to do it in the green room there with all the comics. So like one comic will leave and go on stage, and then another comic will come in. And Dan was uh I was like you know Dan you're my friend. He goes well, I'm I wouldn't say you're my friend. Uh, we're acquaintances. We're colleagues. We uh, and, and I was like well we've gone to Aruba several times. Well it was a work trip. <laughs> and um, you know, friendship is a, a whole thing. It's a whole different category. You know, if you called me on my birthday, maybe we're friends. <laughs> and uh, I felt so point, hurt man. by that. I, I, don't remember, I don't remember precisely the conversation. <laughs> and it sounds exactly like you. Uh, it wasn't quite as brutal as that. I think I was trying to make a distinction between degrees of friendship. Uh, and that, that Pete and I, and I, I said that Pete and I only see each other in work-related context. <laughs> but I allowed for the possibility of moving things forward. Yeah. <laughs> and I mentioned that, uh, that I was open to that. And that if he would like to, uh, to, to take things in that direction, I'm open to it. But I, 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 did have to, I did say that, at least as of now, we are work friends uh, for the time being. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let, let's get some let's get some jackets and wear them that say work friends. Uh, we went out to dinner after that at this Italian restaurant in Vegas, and uh, I, Dan felt so bad that I made a big deal about it that he's like, I remember towards the end of dinner, he's like, "You're my friend." <laughs> As I said, I was hoping I, you uh, might pick up the check. Nothing is, uh, nothing is written in stone, you know. Things evolve. <laughs> if it's any consolation every time i try to have a conversation with dan he's like wait for the podcast <laughs> no, he's right about that no, he's right about that because 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 sometimes we, we, we find ourselves having like really interesting conversations like in the waiting room before this sh starts and then when you try to do it again it, we, we're faking it you know mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> in regard to that last video uh, i think it needs to be said that most people are surviving this, and most mm -hmm. people are, are are healing at home without going to the hospital. And even the uh, even of those people that go to the hospital, uh, most people are surviving. So um, I think that needs to be said because I think people, some people may not realize that, and they think it's it's you know it's lights out. Because you said you know in the video he said oh I got corona and I got pneumonia and that's the deadly combination. I'm not sure that that's uh, percentage wise how deadly that is. It's, it, I think it's a majority of people, even with pneumonia. Uh, yeah, Dan, Dan's comment, uh, Dan's gonna go on Michael's and comment, uh, Michael's post and comment, dime a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, know, I, have no doubt that, I have no doubt that Michael suffered greatly, but I don't want people to get the impression that this is <laughs> the typical uh, you know, thing that happens when you get this virus. I, at least from what I've read, that's not the case. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what do you guys think about this uh, thing? It's old news already, but I, I, st I still think oh, it's This is uh, Gal Gadot. Oh, it was so cringeworthy. Cringy. Yikes. Well, it starts off with her, the which intro, she's- The intro is what really is bad. Imagine there- I got it wrong. Imagine the intro. there's no heaven. This whole thing, hi everybody. It's easy if you try. Gal Gadot. Because that's the part she was getting such a abuse for. For the for that very first part where it was her. Yeah, yeah. It's so fucking ridiculous. Noam, can you look at what I just sent you and pull that up, please? Uh, uh, y you sent me um, uh, Periel. Please join Zoom meeting. No, <laughs> I was no. waiting for that email just to be like Pornhub, Pornhub, I Pornhub. Did you on the Zoom chat? Say it again. What'd you send me? I don't see a recent email. On Zoom chat, I just sent you a message. On Zoom chat. Yeah. Oh, I have to stop saving my. I, I'm not sharing my screen anymore. Sorry. On I'm, Zoom chat, it says, "Can you pull up?" Uh, it's it's it's. Nobody wants to hear this Jew stuff, really. Okay. Yes, it's important. Oh my gosh, I watched Unorthodox. It's so good. Oh my god, I almost watched that, but I've started watching Tiger King instead. Same Watch thing. Tiger King first, oh and God, then please. save that one for a second. It's it's kind of depressing, don't but don't fuck with cats. Did you see that? 
Yeah, that was oh, that was intense. I love true crime, so I loved it. Okay, Perry, I'll hear, here it is. I don't know what you want me to do with this. I want you to pull up the GoFundMe. Yes, okay. This is very important. She is, her, doc, her brother is um, a doctor on the front lines fighting COVID um. in New York um, at Maimonides Hospital. And she's a quite famous handbag designer who is now importing protective gear and shipping it to hospitals across the United States. Wow. Amazing. Okay, so, so is this is GoFundMe? Yeah. Is, but, and is money the problem with regard to this equipment? It, it's lack of equipment. And from what the doctors are saying, um, that they're getting it too slowly and not in large enough quantity. Yeah, but is money the issue there? You say you're raising money for this. Is money the issue or is the fact that you can't snap your fingers and produce hundreds of thousands of masks i don't know i just know that they don't have them all right i'm i well we, we know they don't have them i'm just wondering whether a gofundme is the uh is well the yeah problem. because she's she's talking directly to the hospitals and the doctors and she's getting they're dropping off um from 10 to ten thousand masks um goggles and i don't understand this makes no sense whatsoever i'm sorry i put this up here don't say that. It's amazing. <laughs> but hospitals buy their own fucking masks. No, they don't. All of the hospitals in New York City are short on equipment. Right, but not because they don't have the money to buy them, because they have trouble buying them. They can buy them from these people. They don't need my money to buy them their masks. What do you mean? What do I mean? <laughs> Uh, but wait, is this handbag designer, is she, is she or he, whoever it was, are they going to start making them in their own factory? No, 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 no. She oh, has okay. the connection. I want to hear Noam continue to berate Perry no, Albert. I don't know what you're talking about. She's doing something <laughs> amazing. I'm no, saying is that if they have masks for $10 a pop over here. Not Masks aren't $10 a pop. Protective gear. When it says every $10 secures one set of protective gear, which includes... N95 mask, face shield, goggles, and gloves. Fine. Okay. Now, why, are you why doesn't the hospital pay <laughs> these people to get this protective gear? Why do they need my ten dollars? Why, why is my why does that, why does New York Presbyterian need my ten dollars to give to these people for, for a GoFundMe? Why can't they just pick it up here? Thirty-five grand. Give me three hundred fifty masks. Well, I don't know. Maybe they're doing, maybe they're doing that also. But, but I don't understand why why they would need charity for this to buy masks for hospitals. I don't, I mean, I just think that they don't have the equipment. Yes. I'm setting up a this GoFundMe for everything. Chase Bank so that they can get masks. <laughs> Cause I don't know if Chase Bank has any money. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, to be, to be fair, you know, I don't want to bad mouth anything. And it might be all very noble, it's, it but I just- It is very noble. I don't they, know. They might want to explain, masks. they might want to explain why we're donating to buy masks. I guess, where are they procuring these masks from? Or, or is there an increased production somehow by giving someone more money? That's, that's what I would like to know. So Whatever it is, they, they, the money- Do this you is, want an answer? Because I can answer you. Yeah. Yeah, please. First, let me rant. Whatever it is- <laughs> No, because you're taking credit <laughs> from something amazing. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, God. Oh, no. God. Listen, first of all, they're trying to raise $250,000. That is a drop of water for the federal government. That doesn't make any sense, but go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Because there's so much red tape. I mean, are you disputing the fact that these hospital workers, doctors, and nurses are short on equipment? Does it sound like I was disputing that? I don't know. I don't know what you're, what, what you're pissed off about. It's like the I'm red tape. I'm, the I'm, red I'm, I'm asking why it is that they would have to get such a circuitous route if they have masks available, why can't they sell them directly to the hospital? Why do they need a go? But well, you know what? This sounds like a, well, if we don't donate, I guess they're just gonna throw the masks out. Nobody's gonna no, buy it. No, it doesn't. no, that's not what it sounds like at all. That's not what it sounds so like at all. So if they don't raise the money, what'll happen? It's not if they, every time money's raised, she buys. So like Lennox Hill will say, we need, you know what, get her on the podcast. Let's ask her about it. Fine, I, I will. Because you're probably right. I'm probably being- uh, I am right. I'm 100% right. And what she's doing is fucking amazing. And I'll get her on the next time. show. 
Yeah. It's a good idea. I mean, she's doing more than I'm doing. It yeah. sounds to me like I, I agree with Noam. I mean, if Jesus Christ, they don't have. They're not short on equipment because they don't have the money. No, but it's, it's all the red tape. She says, "I got two million pieces. We need a stock and ready to ship. It is government approved, and hospitals around the country have already agreed to accept it. They'll accept it, but they won't buy it." We, they need us to buy it for them. I think it's a question of logistics and how slow everything is, is well, my guess. Yeah, I mean, maybe. It's, it's, I love how he went from like 10 to one, maybe. Well, you know, because last <laughs> week, last week when we had, uh, um, what was his name, the virologist? Like, I don't want to say his name Patish wrong. Patish Palai, Dr. Palai. Palai. He, was, he was a fantastic guest. I would invite everybody to listen to that podcast, and he really knew his shit. But we were talking about the masks, and I said, if I was the federal government, I would be very careful to give them to the hospitals until I was sure they needed them because they'll all disappear. And he was offended by that. And so I backed off, but... Then today, there were stories about stuff disappearing, supplies disappearing. And then I'm like, well, they, they, they keep uh, drugs under lock and key. Oh, and there's stories about the actual hydro, hydro, hydroxychloroquine disappearing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so, so it's like, it, there's always this like thing, you, you can't say certain things. I couldn't say to him that doctors and nurses might have the nerve to steal masks to give to their loved ones that, but the doctors are like everybody else. Nurses are like everybody else. And I love like, how you couldn't say that to him, but you can say it now, and he's just gonna watch this. Well, to be honest, <laughs> I I, he, I got taken aback when he when he resisted. And I thought of, and then I so I backed off. And then since then, I was thinking about it. And then I thought about how the fact that they lock certain things up in the hospital and I, and and human nature. And then today, I heard the story about the 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 drugs disappearing. Yeah. And I'm like, well, of course it doesn't. It's, I'm not saying bad anything bad about doctors. This is human beings. If you just leave a bunch of masks around right now, when these can save lives, you need to keep them under lock and key. You need to have them numbered and logged in a book and distributed one at a time with a log of how many hours they've been used so it's efficient. That's, that's, that's what a grown up understands about how human nature is and how you have to guard these things. So uh, anyway, I'm, I'm on a rant, another one, but I, it's just, I don't know what this is, but it seems to me that it just seems to be weird that that we're gonna give money. It's not weird at all. It, it gives me a, it gives me a creepy feeling. I wish that behind Noam, instead of music equipment, it was just boxes of masks and gloves. <laughs> <laughs> and and, I, and, and you know, I shouldn't have said creepy feeling. I'm, it's just, I don't know anything about you. You know her? Is is that a man? Yes, or a I, I do know her. You know her personally? I do know her personally. So, so have you seen any change in her uh, lifestyle lately? <laughs> what, she, what she's doing is amazing. I need only, I mean, she's doing it out of just- Get her on the show. I, I don't, listen, I feel terrible. Like if she's watching this- She's definitely going to be. No, no, that she, I, I, please don't let her watch. Because she's gonna be furious. She's gonna be furious and I, and I don't- No, it'll be great because she's no, going- no. She's no, because, going to show people that what she's doing is amazing. No, you can bring her on, but assuming that she is doing something good, and, and it probably is a good reason, I don't want to, um, I don't want to do anything to discourage anybody from doing it. But it would be good. You, this is what you should do. You should ask her on on the site here to put a little ex explanation of why it is. Say you might be wondering why the hospitals can't buy these masks directly. Fair Here's the reason. That would now, be that's uh, constructive. Yeah, that's, it took took that's, me a while, but I got there. Yeah, that's it's, constructive. <laughs> that makes sense, right, Pete? <laughs> that makes total sense. I'm just imagining her coming on the the podcast and Dan going, "So, are you a fraud?" <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know if everybody's uh, watching this online uh, to see Dan's face. There's no, uh, nothing to indicate in my past that I would do that sort of thing. But no, <laughs> right. we uh, we have to go. Well. We started a bit late. I just wanted to mention, we talk about people on the front lines and I was shopping last night for uh, you know, groceries. Um, you see, and you see these people that are working at the grocery store and I'm afraid to go to the grocery store, but I go because I need groceries. And there are people working there for whatever they're getting paid and they're at much higher risk. And it's like, it's like we live in this, they, they, you know, people bagging, bagging uh, groceries, that's like the go-to make fun of job. Uh huh. Well, you better study. You're gonna want to bag in groceries. 
That's like the go-to stereotypical job that you make fun of. And yet well, these people are now like heroes almost. Yeah. Well, you remember when that guy from the Cosby show, uh, they found out that he was oh, bagging yeah, yeah. food oh, yeah. at Trader Joe's or whatever, and then they just yeah. murdered him online. Yeah. Now he's a hero. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh, that, name up. I think you're absolutely right. And um, I was thinking about that too. These delivery people, never, never. and then, you know, there was this thing that, that Lindsey Graham and those guys got a lot of heat for. It's interesting. They were like competing editorials in the Times and Wall Street Journal, but he was concerned that if they give, if they pay out higher rates in unemployment benefits, then people are getting to do these jobs. At that point, people say, fuck it, I'm just, I'm just going to stay home and then we won't have anybody to do those low paying jobs. So I was wondering if since now that these, they're competing with whatever it is, five or $600 unemployment benefits, maybe the supermarkets and stuff are paying these people much more than they used, they used to get. I hope they are. I know the hospitals are. Right. I don't mean to toot my own horn, and, and I guess you could argue that the best charity is, is, is discreet, but I gave $5 to the uh, woman that uh, the cashier last night at the grocery store. That's quite a toot. Oh, that's horn so nice. There. And she was, uh, <laughs> well, maybe my generosity could, uh, in addition to bringing personal glory to me, might also encourage others to do likewise. And it's not because she didn't have singles, right? <laughs> you, you intended <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I took my change and I said- and I keep is, the whole thing. I said, this is for you. And she was very, she looked at me like it's never happened before. From uh, you. Anyway. Uh, I had to sort like, through so many 20s in my pocket <laughs> before I found that five and I gave it to her. <laughs> I, think it's I have some ICU friends that have been offered like 10,000 a week. I would just say that, um, wow. that uh, you know, uh, maybe others could consider uh, doing likewise. Yeah, uh, we, we tip big when we, get, when we get online deliveries now, but the grocery people, they just leave it at our door and I don't know, maybe we should leave a, it's a good idea, maybe we should leave like a little envelope for them. For that's what I do, I leave an envelope taped to the door. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, we have, uh, we have one of those water coolers, and there's this company called Sparklets that delivers our water out here. And uh, the guy came today, and you could, I met him downstairs, and you could just see on his face that he's like, I don't want contact with you. I don't like that you came down here. And uh, he brought the water all the way up to our doorstep in our apartment complex, and I just gave him $20 that I had sitting on the, night, on the little stand, uh, the key stand. And he looked at me like, when I die, maybe this is enough. <laughs> $20, but, Dan, you hear that? Yeah, I'm like, not trying. It was a $130 total bill. What is the appropriate, what is a, not, a non-insulting thing that I should have given her? 10 bucks. Appropriate. Probably five. Pardon? Well, I mean, ten, ten, but anything below 10% is a weird tip, but um, I don't know, Dan. No, no, you're right, because like in a parking garage, the bill could be very high, but you still give like two, three dollars. You don't, you don't pick, mm. you don't tip on percentage on a parking garage. So I don't know. I don't know. I think it was generous that you gave the five dollars. Yeah. I just wanted to give you a, a good hearted ribbing over it. But it was in a Ruben dollars, but. Uh... A Ruben dollars. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. By the way, have you guys seen Aruba Ray's video? Speaking of Aruba, of him. Like he's like in bed, but then he's got spray paint behind him I on the saw wall. It, I was disturbed by it, and I made I made it known that I was disturbed by it. Yeah, where is he? I don't know. That looked like a hostage oh. video. I, don't know what you guys <laughs> video. I call Corona he's Ray. Quite an interesting guy. <laughs> he's a, I, That's a good one. I <laughs> Corona Ray. <laughs> Corona Ray. <laughs> That's a good one, Dan. <laughs> He is like a wacky neighbor on a sitcom. I, I, he, he, well, he's going to be joining us, Noam, on, on the next episode. Yeah, he's going to be coming on our next show. So we can, Please have him explain where he well, is he and what is he doing. Okay, can, can, I, okay, can I show that? What do I look up, Dan? Just right his now. Instagram or Facebook. It may be in stories. Oh, it might have been in stories. No. I think I saw it on his Instagram feed today. I think that he posted on Facebook a few days ago on the Today. Oh, yeah, program. yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is. Um, share screen. There should be a keyboard shortcut for sure. Anyway. 
<laughs> I just woke up. I had a great dream that the phrase social distancing didn't exist anymore. That people just called it uh, staying the fuck away from each other. Uh, uh, I'm in a meth den. Just oh, hold nice up. Guy. He's definitely not social distancing from anyone By right way, now. I had a, you know, I had my first Corona dream last night. Yeah. <laughs> where I was in a cab and the guy's driving the cab. And he goes like, it's the craziest thing, man. I tested positive and I have no symptoms. And he was driving oh. the cab. And I was trying to go like this, like leaning against the door to keep six feet away from him in the cab. And he kept turning around to talk to me and not watching the road. And, you know, I don't know that was anyway. In, my first did you tip him? I don't need to tip him before, the, uh, before we got uh, to the destination. But I just think it's interesting that Corona, it took a week, it took several weeks, but Corona has now entered my dream life. Yeah, it's an anxiety dream. Yeah. Well, that's all I do uh, is anxiety. It's most of my dreams are anxiety dreams, but they don't, have mm-hmm. not involved Corona up until now. Mm-hmm. Can I tell you a, a personal uh, thing about anxiety? I haven't told very many people, but um, so I have, I have general anxiety disorder and I've, uh, I've taken little spot treatments of, you know, clonopin and propranolol in the past. And uh, right before all of this happened, I decided to go on Zoloft, which is an antidepressant that has anti-anxiety qualities. And I've never felt better. Like, it's the worst time in the history of the world since I've been alive. And I have so much serotonin in my brain that I'm like, I feel good. Well, also, you're, you're, first of all, you're in a great position right now. You probably have corona antibodies. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> and I have all the Zoloft got, antibodies. A girlfriend. Uh, I don't know which I would choose, a girlfriend or corona antibodies, but both are good things. Yeah. <laughs> and your, your career's gone good. You just booked the Comedy Central show. Mm-hmm. Despite the fact that the world seems to be crashing around, uh, down around you, you know, your future, other than that, and it looks pretty good. I think you have every reason to be happy. And hey, what's the, you know, you're, you're home, but you're home in a nice place. I mean, it looks like a nice apartment. You got a plant there, you know. Um, <laughs> I got one myself, you know. A bit <laughs> but, um, you know, we're, I mean, look, World War II happened, the Spanish flu happened, Vietnam happened. Things happen and, and life goes on and it's gonna go on after mm-hmm. this. Yeah, we are very fortunate, just all of us in general. I mean, think about what people, you know, were doing. They were, they were getting, you know, poisoning from Agent Orange and napalm, uh, you know, in, in Nam, and we're like, oh my God, I watched Tiger King and it killed a half a day, you know? <laughs> like, we're very, we're all very fortunate. Mm-hmm. And, you, you know, and you probably had Corona already and beat it. And even if you have it, you're young and healthy and probably would beat it if you got it. So, yeah. And I have all this Zoloft. It's, and you got uh, the Zoloft. But I, you know, I'm not like, I'm not more depressed than usual. I'm, I, I think you seem like you're handling it very well, Dan. I'm impressed. I have anxiety depending on the last article I read. Gotcha. That mm-hmm. used to be the last set that I had that I'd kill. And that determined my mood. But now mm-hmm. my mood is determined by the last article I read. Mm-hmm. The last article I read is about a 17-year-old dying of corona. I'm anxious. And mm-hmm. the last article I read was, they think hydroxychloroquine works, that I'm less anxious. So it just depends on the last thing I read. Dan, aren't both your parents still alive? They are. Yeah, they're in lockdown, though, in uh, Connecticut. I haven't seen them in a few weeks. How are, they, how are they getting food, supplies, whatever they need? Well, they're in a retirement you know, community. Um, oh. They, they get, they deliver it. The people that work there deliver it. There's a kitchen and they deliver it. They're not allowed to go to the dining room though and eat in the dining room. They can't do much. They can, uh, they can take walks or whatever. I, I really don't know the protocol, but we're not allowed to go. You call them every day? Every other day, you know, every other day. Do uh, they have Zoom capabilities or smartphones? Can you- know how to use, Your father didn't know how to use Zoom. Yeah, they, they're not mm. good with the technology. Don't tell your mom you gave that $5. She'll give you an earful. <laughs> um, all right can, can we wrap it up yeah dan on this, before we go on this show deserves to be seen and for some reason the person in charge of the in the comedy seller um yeah i'm gonna see her right now on the next show and i'm gonna tell her yeah uh, there's something weird going on there it, it's but, something uh, about something like you or something well 
Um, that could be, but she, I don't know why, but, um, but you know, uh, you have a certain amount of influence, I would imagine. Yeah, I do. Uh, but something very bizarre, as far as I'm concerned, that's taking place with that, re with regard to that. If I, I, you know, we are the official podcast of the Comedy Cellar, I thought. Yes, we are. We are. You're mistaken in that regard. But in any case, um, I'm glad I wore the shirt. At least the I shirt has the logo on it. Shirt. Yeah. Um, I, I would like to do a special shout out to Jamie, who is um, going back into the Aww, nurse thank system. You. It's really amazing. Seriously. Thank you. D deep gratitude. Thanks. Who? Very kind. Jamie. Oh, Jamie, I didn't hear you. Joining us for the last hour. I, don't <laughs> I thought it was another one of your uh, fundraising schemes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm well, a, I'm in well, mental well, health, so I'm not like very, uh, medical, but and you're a very brave woman. Scared. Not not because you work in a hospital, because you're uh, dating a comic. But, uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm dating the happiest comic there is. You know that, though, right? He's. Well, I mean, admit it. Is he not one of the happiest comics you've ever met? He might be the only happy comic guy. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Um, hey, babe, will you ask Dan what the status of our friendship is? I don't see him. <laughs> I don't see him all the time, so he's not all the time. Like he's open. He says he's open to he's open moving to, forward. Dan's open to moving forward with the friendship. All right. I'm going to do a FaceTime call with you, Dan, privately. We're going to have a conversation, and that's really going to lock up this friendship. Amazing. And Carry if you guys do need now. any mental health services, let Pete know, and I can help you with that. Oh, Please. thanks, Jamie. That's really nice. Thank you, Jamie. What? You're in Scarsdale now? Yeah. Nice. You want okay. to so, uh, podcast, podcast I go. at comedycellar.com for all your questions, comments, and suggestions. And where can we find you, Pete? Um, I'm on Instagram and TikTok at Petely, Petely, Petely. It's my do name you, three times in a row. Huh? Do you do the renegade? Yeah, <laughs> renegade, renegade. <laughs> renegade. <laughs> whoa, we are whoa. Gonna continue to follow this story closely. Do, did Pete and Jamie have coronavirus? <laughs> That could be the new uh, Tiger King drama. Yeah, if you tune into, we have a podcast that's half uh, stand-up stuff and uh, or like comedy talk, and then half uh, half mental health called Snuggle Storm, which Dan has been a guest on one of the episodes, uh, and he was he's on one of the funniest episodes of the mm -hmm. show, and he was amazing on it, and there was friendship drama. So if people want to tune into another podcast, if you're already prone to listening to podcasts or watching them, please tune into Snuggle Storm. Nice. Oh, before we go, Dan, well, who's that guy, who, the comedian who does the professional hugging? That's reminding me of. Oh, Mike Fine. We should get Mike Fine back on the show. He was a good guest. <laughs> <laughs> you know Mike Fine, Pete? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know Mike Fine. But... He's hilarious. He's All right, awesome. I got to go. You guys can keep chatting. I got I to gotta join another. Oh, we go, we'll go. Uh, we'll see y'all next Podcast time. at ComedySeller.com. Podcast at, at ComedySeller. I miss the Comedy Seller. At Live from the Table is our Instagram. At Live from the Table. All right. At Live from the Table. <laughs> I'm going to repost. I'm going to repost this. Okay, great. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.